Hello, everybody. Once again, I'm Lou McCracken Jr., a.k.a. Zorbal Chan, Less Than Guru, and today I want to talk about weapons specifically with large and small weapons. So Palladium has a really nice weapon chart that has many varied weapons that you can pick, pick things that fit your uh, character concept as well as, yes, looking at the damage dice and trying to figure out which is going to be the best for you. Um, but you also look at the gold cost and what you might be able to start off with and what you might wish to aspire to. And for medium creatures, it works really well. And these dice ranges are very close to D&D, &D, so that's why it's always been easy to uh, adjust. Even something like a Bastard Sword and Palladium is a, a D8 plus 2. You're getting between a 3 and a 10 in D&D, &D, depending on which form of it, it's going to be a D8 or a D10. So it's uh, very comparable for that. Short swords are D6s and pretty much all the the D&D &D games. So you have a nice compatibility there that you can easily adjust, as I've stated many times. Where the little bit of wonkiness, in my opinion, um, happens is when you look at the giant weapons and the gnome-sized weapons first. Uh, yes, the gnomes are the smallest race in Palladium, but there's also other small races like kobolds and goblins. And that everything else uses medium is kind of a little bit strange. Um, as well as when we look at gnome-sized weapons, they take all of this nice range of damage and they condense it heavily so basically gnome weapons are either going to do a d4 or a d6 depending on what category so everything from knives to axes to sling spears are all going to be d4s and then your pole arms your uh, large swords ball and chain they're all going to do d6s so you lose a lot of variety of why would you choose such as a Flamberge, which is a 3D6 normally, or a Bastard Sword, um, or even a Broadsword. A Broadsword is two-handed and a Flamberge, or sorry, a Broadsword is one-handed and a Flamberge is two-handed. So if you want to do a Sword and Shield, then you would want to do a Broadsword. If you're going for the damage, you would want to do a Flamberge. That means nothing for a Gnome. They could be a, a a broadsword and a flamberge for a gnome are both going to do a d6. So that's kind of a little strange, something I didn't want. So what I decided to do was have size categories. And I have more species that I use, races in palladium. And I have size categories based off of that. I go a very small, small, medium, large, and very large. If you just want to stick with palladium, I would probably do small, medium, and large. And I would adjust the die size, having the die size be one size lower for small and one size higher for large. Um, so for the small, when we're talking about these gnome size, I would completely ignore this part. And what I would do is I would look here. And for a short sword, this is a one through six. So it's a D6. I would make it a D4. And something like here for the flamberge, instead of 3D6, I would do 3D4. And that way you allow that player to have a character that can choose a range of weapons and the weapon that they are using will have some meaning just like the medium. When we look at the large or the giant weapons, those do an additional die. And it's really easy when you're looking at this going the short sword is 1d6, so it would be 2d6. A broadsword is 1d8, so it's 2d8. It's kind of doubling and makes sense. But then when you have the 1d8 plus 2, it's a 2d8 plus 2. So not quite doubling, but close. But a 2d6 here would be a 3d6, and a 3d6 would be a 4d6. So you're not getting that doubling, but you might not want it to be that high. So again, I would suggest just raising the die size. So for the short swords, I would do a d8. For the Bastard Sword, I would make it a D10 plus 2. And for something like the Flamberg, I would do, uh, instead of 3D6, I would do 3D8. So giving those giant-sized weapons, they would have more meaning, but it's not just adding another die, which 
kind of adjusts it differently depending on the weapon so that it's the same all across. So that's the main reason why I would do it. The other thing that I would do is if I was having those short, I would not have the dwarves be short. I would probably even have them because the the lore and that around dwarves is they're very strong, they're very muscular. I would probably give them the giant size and say that that's how they work and give them the D, the, the one size higher. So a dwarf short sword, even though it's a little more compact, just in a dwarf hand, it would be a lot more forceful. So I would uh, raise that to a D8. And then when we're talking about sizes, you can either say you can't wield the other size or what I do is I allow them to use their hand to hand bonuses but I don't allow them to use their weapon proficiency bonuses because as a weapon gets larger or smaller because of size, it's not just it's longer, it's the hilt is bigger or smaller, the the girth of it is bigger to make it clumsy, whether it's smaller or larger. So that's why I would not give the, the weapon proficiency bonuses. But hand-to-hand -hand bonuses are basically... Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Mars is uh, jumping on my keyboard. Um, basically, I would allow the hand-to-hand -hand because that's general hand-to-hand -hand improvised weapons, and that's basically what I would consider the weapon. But I would allow it to be it's a, a giant-sized short sword. So, yes, I would say 1d8. You just don't get your weapon proficiencies because you yourself are giant. Along with this... There is a rule in Palladium where certain races can't be longbowmen because they say they're too short. I see it as if I can have a gnome-sized flamberge, then why can't I have a gnome-sized longbow that would do that die reduction? So we look at a longbow here, it's 2d6. I would say, okay, it's 2d4, and your, your longbow is a longbow for a gnome. Because they don't say, oh, it has to be a normal longbow for a wolfen. I would assume a wolfen or a troll would have a larger longbow. And then that opens up occupations to races that normally would just be some weird rule of, nope, longbows are too, are too uh, big for them to use. No, they have small size slamberges, they would have small size longbows. So basically adjusting the die size to one category down or one category larger um, makes a lot of sense. And I haven't had any problems with it in my own game, even though I have adjusted the numbers a little bit because I wanted damage to be a little more deadly. Um, so for things such as the 2D12, I might make it uh, 1D12. Uh, or yeah, instead of 2d6, I would have 1d6 plus 4 or 5 or something. So it, the, the range is, is narrowed on what you can get, but it kind of makes it towards the upper end of the scale. So having said that, hopefully this is something that you uh, found useful and might implement in your game just to completely get rid of this section here, the giant and gnome-sized weapons, as well as opening up occupations to races that are barred for them when they have rules already. So even saying you can be a gnome or a dwarf and just reducing the damage and using this if you wanted to, you could do that. Although I do highly suggest changing the uh, the die, lowering it, or, or raising it. So having said that, once again, I am Lehman Crafton Jr., a.k.a. Zoralchan, less than guru. And until next time, I will catch you later.